On this channel, we are not productive for the sake of productivity. We are productive to enable us to live the life we want. We are productive in a way that roots ourselves in our values and lends compassion to ourselves when we may not perfectly adhere to all the detailed systems and complicated project plans. I've been making these videos for a while now, and in my head, I've loosely been calling this philosophy soft productivity. Soft productivity is about prioritizing well-being and happiness above output. The way I see it, soft productivity has four principles. Compassion over shame, happiness over hustle, values over vanity, and self-care over self-soothing. By the end of this video, you're going to understand these four principles and know how to implement them into your life. Let's get started. See, it's soft, soft like the cloud. Okay, let's start with compassion over shame. Compassion has so much more to do with being productive than you think it does. But hustle culture will have you believe that being compassionate is a weakness or somehow reducing your resilience to life challenges. But what it really does is help you reduce the sense of shame that often keeps us locked in toxic cycles of productivity where we end up overworked and burnt out. So first, to understand compassion over shame, we need to start having compassion for ourselves. Without compassion for ourselves, we rely on perfection as as a metric to tell us if we are succeeding. And we often blame ourselves for things that are totally outside of our control that mess up that perfection. Or we blame others for things that are within our control because we are not being perfect and we can't face the shame that comes with not being perfect. So we often blame ourselves for things that we can't control and blame others for things that are within our control. So to practice having compassion for ourselves, we wanna work on reframing our failures and understanding our fears. A few good ways to do this are first, First, to start reframing our failures, we want to start thinking about our failures less in terms of like, oh, I went out there and I failed, and more like, oh, I went out there, I tried something, and I learned something. Reframing failure as a learning experience is always a sort of meme that people use when you talk about your failures, but it is really true. So you can have failed at something and you can also learn from something. I gave this example in a previous video, but one thing that was really fun that I started doing in my relationship was I observed my boyfriend playing video games games and he would often die and when he would die in video games he would go back to the beginning of the level and he would say okay so I died so this mission that I'm going on now is just a fact-finding mission and he would accept that the level was too hard for him and he would say I'm going on a fact-finding mission and he would just play the level and try to learn as much as he could and then of course he would die because he wasn't strong his character wasn't strong enough or he didn't know everything yet about the level or hadn't found the secret puzzle but he would continually go on these fact-finding missions and it was was a really useful way for him to reframe his failure that he wasn't actually completing the mission or completing the boss. So we started adopting this fact-finding terminology into our relationship, into everything we did, where we were going to a new place for the first time and it was like, okay, this might not be fun because it's a new place, but it's just a fact-finding mission. And we would go to the new place and we would see what it was about, see what it had to offer. So the risk of failure became zero because when your goal is to just learn information, you're always going to succeed. But Working on and understanding our fears is a little bit difficult. I'm actually coming out with a video next week that will talk a lot more about fear, but the basic idea behind understanding our fears is naming it and recognizing it and working with it instead of trying to hide it. Because again, when we hide our fears, we develop shame and that's not good for us or anybody else. Then of course, you also wanna have compassion towards others. You'll work with lots of different people who will form the landscape of your productivity. They may be roadblocks or allies depending on how much compassion you have for them. So kids, coworkers, spouses, neighbors, bosses, clients, everyone in your landscape deserves compassion for their own productivity journey and so that you can have them as allies on your productivity journey. Try to understand where people are coming from when you're working with them. So for example, I had an experience once where I was working with a coworker who, as soon as we encountered difficulty in the project we were working on, she began to get kind of short with me and snippy with me. And I could tell she was just really aggravated, but the things she was saying weren't making sense. And every time I tried to point out that she would just get more aggravated. So instead of being like, hey, you're doing this wrong and her getting aggravated, I tried to be more understanding and have more compassion. And instead I had a phone call with her and I was like, hey, maybe you can walk me through where you're coming from so that I can help you with what I 
I know because I want us both to succeed on this project and I'm feeling like I don't really understand where you're coming from yet. So once I was able to say that and sort of diffuse the tension by being like, uh, listen, I'm the one who's misunderstanding you. I get that. Once I said that, it really diffused the tension because she felt like I was seeking to understand her and not just tell her what to do. And that really worked with that particular coworker. We got through that interaction well, and it has that same tactic has led me through many, many other interactions with other people where they might be coming across as really aggressive. And instead of getting mad, I'm like, okay, what is your story? What are you going through? What do you need right now? And as soon as they hear you say that, they are much more likely to show compassion back to you as well because you're not presenting yourself as a threat. So when you're compassionate to yourself and compassionate towards others, you start to break down the shame that you have and the shame that other people have as well. And that makes everybody more productive in the end. Next, let's talk about principle number two, which is happiness over hustle. When I tell you I almost called this channel happiness over hustle, like this is really one of the core tenets of my channel, to be honest. Basically what happiness over hustle means is prioritizing happiness for the sake of happiness over hustle for the sake of hustling. We all need to know how to hustle now and again. We basically need to know the value of working hard under difficult circumstances circumstances, relying on ourselves, and thriving under pressure. That's what hustling is, and it enables us in a great way to be able to succeed when we can't control the pressures that are put on us. By doing a little bit of hustling and getting on that grind, we are able to succeed even when we can't control our environments. But we do need to make ourselves aware of those times when hustling isn't serving our happiness. Hustling for the sake of hustling often will lead us to burnout and will not lead us to happiness. If the goal of being productive is living the life that we want, we need to be prioritizing our happiness over hustling for the sake of hustling or being a person who hustles. So what do you do when you find yourself in this state of burnout? And what do you do when you realize that all the hustling you're doing is not bringing you happiness? Well, I have advice for you for two circumstances. One is when you can get out of the hustle and pursue things that make you happier and two is for when you can't get out of the hustle and you need to have fun while you're doing it. If you can get out of the hustling, so if all the hustling is self-imposed and you don't need to be doing the things that are burning you out, I want you to reevaluate your priorities and build in more fun and peaceful activities for yourself on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. So you can say, look, I am not thriving in this digital products business that I thought was going to bring me all this free time. In fact, it's burning me out. I don't have to do that anymore if I don't want to. I can get out of it because I it's my personal business and so I can adjust. It might take you a long time to find out what your actual priorities are, but it's totally worth doing even if that means looking on a long timeline and saying, okay, I have six months to get out of this business that I started for myself that I don't actually like, that's not actually bringing me happiness. You just wanna get started on the plan because it's gonna feel like taking control of your life and taking control of your happiness. Now, what do you do if you can't get out of it? I think this is most of our situations under late stage capitalism, but basically if you can't get out of the hustle, if your boss makes you work really hard and you need the job because you need the money, or if you are under a lot of pressure because you are the single parent in a big household and you're just trying to keep it all together, I have a few recommendations, but basically you wanna try to make the things that you're doing be as enjoyable as possible. So because you can't get out of it, you might as well make it a good time. I have made a number of videos on having fun on my channel. So I will leave some of those up in the cards. And remember, it's your happiness. It's your life. You have control over it. Even if you can't get out of doing all the things that make you feel like you're hustling and burnt out, you can still work to make those things at least a little bit more enjoyable. One of my favorite ways to get a lot done while prioritizing my well-being is today's sponsor, listening.com. Listening.com is an app that turns anything and everything into an audiobook you can listen to on the go. Academic paper, textbooks, PDFs, websites, even emails. So all that knowledge you've been waiting for a chance to cram inside your head, you don't need to stay up all night doing that anymore. You can catch up on your coursework while doing the dishes or read that article while exercising. I honestly would have killed for this in college. It has automatic chapter detection, one-click note-taking, and it even knows how to read math equations and skip footnotes. So I think this thing probably has a master's degree. It also has a bunch of different AI voices, which 
which honestly is an unexpected game changer for me. I don't know what it is about starting a new audiobook, but sometimes you get going and the voice just feels like off. I've straight up not finished books because of this. So being able to select from different options rules and you can even switch like mid chapter or mid sentence if you want. It really helps if you find yourself tuning out and wanna just lock back in. Listening has a two week trial that'll enable you to check out all of this for free, but as viewers of my channel, you get an extra week. So if this sounds up your alley, go to the link in my description or listening.com to get three free weeks. Thank you again to Listening for sponsoring and let's get back to soft productivity. Now let's talk about values over vanity. You guys know I love talking about values on this channel and I think really rooting in and figuring out what your values are is going to help you so much from avoiding the vanity trap. So what is the vanity trap? It's basically a term that I made up just now <laughs> um, to describe what happens to you when you start Googling things like goals to pursue or habits to track. This is when you take advice and information from people who live totally different lives than you, especially those who are promising riches, fame, followers, accolades, things that are vanity metrics for our actual happiness. Of course, a certain amount of wealth, being well-known, having friends, things like that can definitely contribute to our happiness. But when you start pursuing goals and doing things in the name of productivity that are actually serving these vanity metrics, you end up feeling really unfulfilled. Filled. Instead of pursuing the vanity metrics, what you actually want to do is think about what your actual values are. Sometimes it takes a lot of time to find your actual values. It takes a lot of time to really know yourself. I don't really feel like I found what my actual values were until just this past year. So it can take a lifetime, it can take a long time, but you should always be looking for the things that are going to bring you actual happiness and bring actual meaning into your life over the things that are, again, just these sort of vanity metrics that like may signal meaning but don't actually have any solid uh, relationship with what we really want in life. Think like football was your dream dad I love musical theater like th that kind of narrative you need to find your version of musical theater because your dad wants you to pursue his vanity metric of being a famous football player but you love musical theater. To make this process a little bit easier I will leave a link to a values quiz that helped me figure out my values in the description. It's a basic quiz that sorts things against each other and sort of helps you you come up with a list of top five values that according to the quiz you prioritize. It's a good starting place. It's not the end all be all, but it is a really good starting place. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just really like this quiz. So whether or not you use that quiz or whether you just try another values exercise on the internet, I want you to try to find at least five values. And when you start creating goals, ask yourself if they relate to your, that those values. Once you start creating value-based goals, your productivity will dramatically shift because you will actually be interested in the things that you are doing and not just bored and tired with trying to chase these vanity metrics that don't even belong to you or your values. I did recently make a video about attaching uh, values to goals, so I will leave it linked up in the cards if you are interested in it. And the last thing I want to talk about, the last principle or rule is self-care over self-soothing. Luckily, this one is very straightforward. It's about doing actual self-care instead of relying on our coping mechanisms. So what does actual self-care look like? Well, actual self-care is doing things like the dishes or creating healthy meals. Sometimes it's moving your body. Sometimes it's journaling, right? These are the things that improve our mental and physical health and involve taking care of ourselves in one way or another so that future us is better set up to handle the challenges of life. This is real, actual self-care. Coping mechanisms, meanwhile, are things like binge-watching TV shows. Classic one is drugs and alcohol. Doom scrolling. These are things that may feel good in the moment, but that actually are not good for us in the long term. So when you come home from a really difficult day at work, you might see a pile of dishes, feel really crummy in your mind, know you should be doing some journaling, and realize that you've sat at a desk all day and you haven't even gone for a walk. But all that sounds really hard, so instead you binge half a season of television and you have a few beers and spend the rest of your night scrolling on social media. And all of that might help you avoid thinking about how upset you are because you had a really hard day, but what it doesn't do is 
actually take care of you after that hard day. It doesn't actually show any compassion to yourself. It doesn't actually give you anything to build upon. What's important to recognize here is to recognize when you are using things like this or any other number of things. I mean, for some people like running is a coping mechanism, right? Like there's your coping mechanism is going to be unique to you. These are just really common ones, but it's important to recognize what they are so that you can recognize when you are doing them for fun and when you are doing them to self soothe. I am by no means perfect. In fact, I had a really hard weekend and I spent a lot of the weekend binging TV and being on my phone. And I love doing those things, but I recognize that after the weekend I had, it was really tough and I was doing those things just to self-soothe. So now what I'm trying to do is make sure I cook some meals that are gonna be healthy for myself. And I'm trying to make sure I'm doing a lot of journaling to get out all the mental clutter I developed by having a really bad weekend. This isn't to say that you can't binge a TV show every once in a while. It's really fun. Spending a whole day consuming something you really love can be very relaxing and fun and feel very soothing in the moment. But you wanna make sure that you actually know the difference when you're doing something for fun and when you're doing it because you're trying to self-soothe and avoid your problems. Because the more we self-soothe, the less time we actually have to be productive. The more we avoid our problems, the less we understand how to solve them through these tactics of productivity that we're all learning how to be better at. Plus, it is totally productive to do the dishes and cook some meals and move your body. That can count as productivity. What you're doing is engaging in productive self-care that is going to take care of future you. I don't want to necessarily imply that all self-care has to be productive, but I do want to show you that this contributes to your overall happiness and well-being way more than doing this to cope. I am certainly not the first person to talk about soft productivity, so I will leave some more resources down in the description box below if you want to keep this compassionate hustle in your life. Of course, if you liked this video, you are probably going to like a video that I just made on how to achieve sustainable change. I will leave it right here on the screen next to my head so you can keep hanging out with me. Thank you guys so much for watching, for being awesome, for staying subscribed. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one.